Awesome, awesome. Glory to God. <laughs> it is great to be with you today, people of God all over the world. Mm -hmm. We thank God for a day like this. Mm -hmm. You are welcome to this edition of mm -hmm. Let's Talk, mm -hmm. uh, where we share God's word. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, anywhere you speak God's word, some things happen. Mm -hmm. People are enlightened. When you speak God's word, especially as inspired by the, inspired by the Holy Spirit, healings take place. Freedom takes place. So today we are expectant because we have gathered before the Lord, you know, uh, in this um, broadcast. Hallelujah. We've been considering the topic, judge not. As believers, should we judge or not? And then when we are judging, you know, what should be the premises of our judgment? You know, we have learned that it should be based rightly upon the word of God. You know, if God says it, and we decide in line with what he has said, mm -hmm. then we are making the right judgment. Mm -hmm. So we are going to look at the advantages of making right judgment, and what are the disadvantages of not making the right judgment. God bless you as you listen, and as you watch, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So it's in a long line of prove all things and hold fast to that which is good, which is in First Thessalonians 5, 21. Yeah. Then we also talked about Acts 17, 10 to 12, that talks about the Berean Christians, that when Paul was talking to them, that they readily received the word, and yes. then they went back home mm. to check out those scriptures. To see whether they were true or not. Oh yes. And then they came and believed. Mm. And so they made the right judgment. They didn't just take him. That okay. This is a <laughs> great testimony. Look at how he came. Mm. To know the Lord. On the road. To so, going to persecute. Yeah. Road of Damascus. Yeah. Yeah. That they didn't just take him. That look at everything that is happening with him. Mm, Based their judgment. Upon. Maybe handkerchiefs were taken from him to go and heal the sick mm. and demons were cast out yeah. and all that. They yeah, didn't prison, look at that. Prison doors were opened. Yes. You know, while he was uh, praising yes. God and praying with the Silas. Yes. There was a shaking and uh, <laughs> yes, wonders so, happened through his ministry. Mm. So we shouldn't uh, look at look whatever at what he says. That I it must say. be from God. Mm. From beginning to end, it must be God. Mm. Can start in faith. Mm. And that means that that person finishes in faith. Mm. Jesus is the author of that person's faith. And that means that is the end also mm. of that faith. Mm. And we have come to realize that somebody, God can author. Jesus Christ is the author of that person's faith. Oh, yes. But in the middle can mm. bring in flesh, the wisdom of men. Mm. So mm. that the faith now is based upon the wisdom of men. Mm. That comes to know. That's what the Bible says. Oh yes. So he now he started with faith, but along the line, he put wisdom of men. So oh, that yes. faith is no longer based upon the word of God, mm. but it's be, uh, not based upon Jesus Christ anymore. But it's now based upon the wisdom of men, traditions of men. Oh yes. The rudiments of the world, philosophy of men. <laughs> and the one thing is um. And then finishes. <laughs> one thing is that um. Some, you know, somebody has been right before, so it must be right all the all time. All the time. Somebody has preached the right message before, mm. so everything he's preaching must be right. Mm. Uh, that's, yes. I mean, the Berean Christians didn't do that. Mm. They still went and shake. Mm. You know, the Bible says they received God's word with a ready heart, mm. and they proved those words, and they came and believed what Apostle Paul had preached to them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Honoring him, but you know, but not just taking a uh, hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. All that he touched them without they proving it, making judgment. Yes, that is Acts 17, verses 10 to 12. Yes. Hallelujah, the Berean Christians. Yes, may the Lord, may the Lord raise up Berean Christians, Amen. you know, in us and all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, Berean Christians, and then when we even talk about Berean Christians, some people will say that they check. Okay. That even when a man of God teaches them, that they mm. always check. Mm. But the thing is that, is it based on what that man of God has said? 
if it's based on only the scriptures that's the man, that of, God. The man of God has said, you don't have any other scriptures that also match up with it. Mm. Then that's where the problem lies. That mm. Because if you base it on the same premises that the man of God has based it on, mm. then that means that you also arrive at the same conclusion that that man of God has, mm. has come to. Mm. And, you know, so many leaders too, they, they, want, they want to push an agenda. Mm. So they'll go and look for scriptures, whether correct or not, whether mm. in line with what God is doing now or not, to push that agenda mm. to the flock of God. And if you, are not, if you are not hearing from God and see beyond mm. the letter given to you, you'll mm. say, well, that scripture was given to a leader by God, to a pastor by God. Mm. No, your pastor, our pastor, that leader has gone to look for a scripture to back up his uh, agenda mm. and believe it believe it i mean believe it brethren the bible has so many scriptures Definitely. if you want to marry uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines you can you can you <laughs> must see a scripture, <laughs> see scripture to support to you <laughs> if you want to be a drunkard and be drunk mm. you will see a scripture to back you to back you up mm. if you want to if you want to marry one wife and uh, marry one husband you will see what that will uh, that will corroborate your action Mm. So the scripture is there, full of instances. Mm. The Bible says many people, they interpret the word to their destruction. Mm. So as a believer, you have to discern when a leader is bringing the scripture to further his own agenda, to further her own agenda, you know, you should be able to say, no, this one is not what God is saying. Mm. You have to discern what this man of God is saying, what this man of God is saying mm. is not in line with what God is doing right now. Mm. Or it's not in line with my destiny. What is God saying as you do? Is what that person is saying in line with what I've been called to do? If it is not saying that, remove the CV mm. and look at the word of God with an mm. open face. Mm. Remove what you have been taught by any man of God. Focus on the scriptures with an open face. Mm. Then you will be able to judge that. All right. And the Holy Ghost can even bring scriptures. Yes. As we have said before. That the Holy Ghost can bring scriptures that will corroborate what that person has said. Yes. Or even refute it. Mm. And say no. No. If you want to accept that, look at this scripture, mm -hmm. look at this scripture. Mm. Mm. And then many people, they base what they want to say on the Old Testament. Okay. So by the time they base something on the Old Testament, they say, you see, it's in the Bible now. Hmm. It's in the Bible. Can't you see it's in the Old Testament? But if you find it in the Old Testament, or you can't find it in the New Testament. Mm. And when we talk about the New Testament, we are talking about the New Covenant. Mm. If it cannot be found in the New Covenant mm. that, we are, that we have in Christ, then it's something that we need to throw away. Mm. 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 That's true. So we need to make judgments, and we have already said it, that when we make judgments, it should be based upon the right premises, the Word of God, the Holy Ghost also giving you the scriptures. He's the one that will even give you scriptures to back up whatever that person has said or to refute it. Mm, mm. And then, do we see the disciples also? Do we see them practicing the same thing or saying the same thing? Mm, mm, the early we, church. Uh -huh, the early church. Because yeah. they came in after Jesus Christ left. Oh yes, oh yes. So if they practice it, then that means that it's something that we should practice. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't practice it, then why are we practicing it? Mm, 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 mm. In fact, as far as judgment is concerned, no sentiment. Yes, no sentiments. You know, many people, they are, they, are, they are emotionally attached to, maybe to their pastor, to a prophet, to a teacher. Say, ah, that's, I mean, that teacher, is, you know, I'm the fan of so-so teacher. And they are attached to those people and they don't even check what they are being taught. It and must be right. It must uh, be right. You know, it must it, be right. Uh, every time it, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic teacher. Meanwhile, the danger is what you are taught matters a lot. Mm. It, determines, mm. it determines what you believe. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. What you are taught and you listen to matters a lot because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, you will believe what you are taught. Mm. And what you are taught, you know, your belief will empower what will happen to you as a person mm. so when you just when you just handle carelessly you know when it comes to judgment or you know what you are taught and you just listen to anybody not shaking it then you are putting your life at risk mm. because at the end of the day the teacher won't suffer that problem the consequence with you mm. 
the pastor will not suffer the consequence with you. Mm. You are going to suffer the consequence yourself. Mm. All by yourself. All by yourself. Bible says, if you are wise, you are wise for yourself. Mm. If you are foolish, you alone will bear it. Mm. May you not bear the consequence of wrong teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. Although, although that, that's for that, yeah. to judge. Uh, uh, you know, being able to judge. May you not, may you not go and enter into consequences of not hearing the right teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. But you are hearing the word and your spirit repels it. Mm. You are hearing the teaching and your spirit is just saying, no, 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 that is not, that's not it. Many people say, well, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I am being rebellious. Uh, I'm the one that is at <laughs> I'm fault. I'm the one that is at fault. I am being rebellious. That's why mm. my spirit is against what I'm hearing. If you are born of God, I have the Holy Spirit of God. When you are feeling uncomfortable, you shake it. I say, ah, why? I mean, and the thing keeps on repeating itself. And you can't, and you are trying to put a hand into it. I say, what's, what's really wrong with me? If you search all around you mm. and nothing is wrong, mm. then please take that right step. Mm -hmm. Don't believe that. You are not compelled to believe any teaching mm. without finding out the source. Yeah. Without finding out whether that thing is right or mm -hmm. wrong. Because at the, end, at the end of the day, you are going to bear the consequence of what you believe. Yes. And then, when you don't make right judgment, <laughs> it can make or mar you. Mm. When you make right judgments, you yes. are hearing something. And you can say, okay, this is right. Okay. It can make you mm. mm -hmm. move you further along when yes. it comes to fulfilling destiny, the, the, fulfilling absolutely, purpose. Absolutely, absolutely. But when you hear a, a teaching mm. and you decide that you are making no judgment on it, you know somehow that it's not right. <laughs> that <Somehow>. thing, <laughs> okay. it can mar you. It can mar your destiny. Mm. Mm. It can make you what is not supposed to make you. Mm, mm. Something other than the creation of God. Wow. Wow. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everyone, from, from Norway, from Nigeria. God bless you. Real good. Thanks for joining us. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. So let's look at... Advantages uh, of judging and disadvantages of not... Yeah. For judging. those who have not, you know, for those who are joining us um, afresh uh, on this series, please, you can look check our previous um, broadcast mm. for the past, I think, about, about, about six weeks now. We've been treating judge not can Christians judge? Mm. And we have seen so many things. So we are putting about about eight to ten hours of teaching on that. So please, you can go back and uh, take your time to watch. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we are discussing, first of all, we are going to look at Esther. Mm. Esther made judgment. Esther had to make judgment by not keeping silent when the need arose for her people mm. she had to make a judgment she oh, could yes. have kept silent that is make no judgment she could have been somebody that would just sit down it doesn't it doesn't bother it doesn't bother me hmm. it doesn't matter to me don't oh, yes. you know that i'm the queen huh. no matter what happens to my people it, it can't touch me yes because huh. i'm safe the king won't kill me because i've not offended him in any way mm. So, looking at that story from Esther chapter 3 to Esther 10, we are not going to read it because there are so many scriptures. You can read it on your own or anything. Yeah. But because she made judgment, mm. she saved lives, not only her own, but even the lives of her people. Oh, yes. Mm. She saved lives because she was able to make judgment. She didn't just keep quiet. She mm. had to go to the king and she had to prepare to go and meet the king. Mm. And God gave her the strategy of what to do in order to be heard by the king. Mm. Mm. So she was not silent. So here she was somebody that was a deliverer. The Bible tells us that even Mordecai, when he went to meet her, she was reluctant. <laughs> Let's read that, please. Yeah. That's Esther. Four. Four. From verse 14. I mean, Esther 4, 14. The book of Esther is before, before Job, before Psalms. For if you all together hold your peace at this time, that's Mordecai addressing Esther, the queen, then shall relief and deliverance 
enlargement arrives arrives to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this. That's a very powerful scripture. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It's saying, if you hold your peace hmm. at such a time like this, if you don't take it, if you don't talk, hmm. God will raise help and enlightenment from another place. There is a place called another place. Mm. <laughs> we are those who are asked to speak and they refuse to speak are replaced. Mm. God, God mm. has reserved people mm. in a place called another place. God has reserved people in a place called another place. Where he goes to take people from there and replace those who have refused to make judgment mm. that will save the lives of people. Yes. Because nobody can stop God's program. Mm. When God has a plan, some plans, I think all the plans of God, they are time sensitive. Mm. They are time sensitive. So if somebody is asked to take a move at a given point in time, mm. and the person has refused God has spoken to him or her in different ways, in different methods, and he has refused. There is a place in God called another place where God goes mm. and replace the person who has disobeyed his instruction mm. with a person who will carry out his task mm. because his will must be done on earth yes. as is in heaven. Yes. May you and I not be replaced by God concerning what he has told us to do mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Another place. Amen. We also mentioned what is called, you know, that there's something that's called the law of replacement. Mm. The law of replacement. Oh, yes. Many a times, when God sees that somebody is messing up, mm. somebody is not responding, mm. he has warned them in their closet, he has warned them in their secret, and they have refused to answer his mm. warning. God may not remove them from the scene. An example was found in the, yeah, you know, uh, King Saul. King Saul was still a king. However, because King Saul had made, has messed up, God had to look to another place, mm. which happens to be an, an, uh, you know, uh, in the bush, <laughs> in the bush a, a place and that is not, you know, highly, a, a bush. He has to look for a, somebody that has been spending time in the bush with him. Mm. To replace King Saul as a king. Meanwhile, King Saul was still reigning. They were still blowing trumpet before him. Hey, long live the king. Many followers. He had so many followers. In fact, on Facebook, King Saul had 3 billion followers on Facebook. Mm. Liking, liking his... Uh, and loving. <laughs> and loving and sharing. And sharing. And sharing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's travel time. Sharing, sharing on Facebook. So many followers. Mm. However, as far as God was concerned... Mm. He was no more relevant. Mm. God has gone to assess his place, his another place, uh -huh. and he has raised up a young man called King David. Mm. David. And David replaced yes. King Saul. David's life was transformed. Somebody who used to be in the bush, God brought him out of that, of, you know, of that state. Mm. And he puts him in the palace. Mm. Somebody who used to tend sheep. Mm. God brought him out from that state. Mm. He changed his status. Mm. And he made him ruler over God's people. Mm. You are watching this program. Your life is like a person who is, who is in the bush crying for lifting. Mm. Say, oh God, lift me up. Oh God, when will I be who I should be? God, you have shown me so many things. Mm. When will I? Get ready. Your time is now. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. see you lifted up from that bush. Amen. From there, another place. You know, you know, from that another place to a place where you'll be ruling. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To a place where you will be happy that you are fulfilling God's agenda for your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Those revelations that God has shown to you, they will not tarry in the heavenlies mm. anymore. Mm. 
they will be released into your life from today in Jesus' name. Amen. Get ready. In fact, as you go to the new year, if Jesus tarries, mm -hmm. get ready. Amen. Because he's taking you from the bush to the palace. Oh, yes. Law of replacement. Yes. And we looked at um, some people that this affected the law of replacement, even apart from Saul being replaced by David. We also see that even Vashti was replaced because mm. we all know what happened to her. Yeah, Vashti was the Vashti was, was the a queen. former queen. Former queen before Esther came uh -huh, to the before throne. Esther. So a lot of replacement. So she took over. Esther took over and all her estates were given to Esther. Mm. Mm. Everything that belonged to that queen was transferred and she was forgotten. Mm. Mm. That is Ju Esther 1. Yeah. Yes, Esther 1. And even Judas is carried out too. He was replaced with Matthias hmm. after he had messed up and betrayed Jesus Christ. So there is a law of replacement. Hmm. If you say that you will not do what God wants you to do, hmm. he's not going to wait hmm. for long. Hmm. He will say, time is up. And then he will go to the, another place hmm. and bring somebody that he has prepared hmm. in that another place. He will bring that person to come and take over mm. so that deliverance can be wrought so that enlargement can be wrought mm. so we know that because of the judgment that she made deliverance came she didn't even know she was a deliverer until mother kai had to tell her mm. what about if this this position that you're occupying today let's just say it was because of a reason for this very purpose mm. that you have been raised up and put in this particular position so that you can bring deliverance and enlargement to the people of God. Mm. So because she made the right judgment. Oh yes. She brought enlargement and deliverance. Because we are told that for all her days. All her days she and Mordecai. Mm. They look for the welfare of their people. Oh yes. So enlargement came. Mm. Nobody will dare lift up their tongue against a Jew. Because mm. they will know that the consequences will be great. Mm. They already have an example of Haman, Haman yeah. that died and even all his mm. all his sons also died also. Mm. So if she had not made mm -hmm. this particular judgment, oh, yes. if she had made no judgment, there would have been a great massacre, mm. a genocide in her own time. <laughs> genocide in her own time. Mm. If she had not raised up herself to make judgment, mm. everyone in her race would have been slain. Mm. Can you imagine? Wow. And that was in her own time. Mm. 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 Unless God raise up, raises up another person mm. 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 to do the work. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then, you know, you are watching us. You can be saying, well, uh, Esther was a deliverer, but who am I? You are also a deliverer in you your field. You are also a deliverer in your field. In your purpose. In your purpose. If you know what you are called to do, hmm. you are a deliverer in that purpose of yours. Yes. If you know what you are called to achieve in life, hmm. as you follow that purpose through you, people that come in contact with you, they will experience deliverance. Mm. They will experience enlargement. Mm, yes. So every child of God, we are we are called to be a deliverer. Oh yes. Every believer. Mm. No wonder Christ says, and these signs shall, shall follow, follow them that believe. Oh yes. In my name shall they cast out devils. It means in my name they shall be delivered. Oh, That's the yes. word. Oh yes. You know, in my name they will deliver others, those mm. who have the money problem. Mm. So you are a deliverer. It's a matter of discovering your world. We are, you know, what am I called to do? Mm. Then begin to function in that particular area. Yes. yes. You can be called to be a lawyer mm. in that field. Every lawyer that comes across your path mm. must hear about the deliverance grace in mm. Christ. Mm. As many whose lives are messed up in your field, when mm. they meet with you, mm. they must be able to encounter the freedom grace of God. Oh, yes. And they will also experience enlargement. Mm. You may be a house mom or a husband in the home. Mm. Your family 
a raised door to be delivered by you. Mm. You can be you can be you can be an architect. You can be a designer. Mm. You can be a a, a sport person. You can be an entertainer. You can be an actor, mm. an actress. Mm. In that field of your endeavor, you are raised up to be a deliverer. Mm. So don't say deliverance is only for some people that are called deliverance ministers or pastors. Pastors. Prophets, prophets, teachers, evangelists, evangelists apostles. Uh, apostles, you know. <laughs> if you are none of those titles and you are a believer in Christ, you are called to, you deliver, are called to deliver somebody. And bring enlargement to somebody. And, and, it, and it shouldn't be maybe one million people. It can be one person at a time. One person at a time. Yes. God can call you to, you know, to deliver so many people, but you can even call you to just deliver only one person in your lifetime. Mm. And that person, he won't forget what God has used to do mm. in his or her life. Mm. Imagine Jesus Christ. Now, there were occasions where God used him to deliver so many people. Mm. And also, there was an occasion in Mark 5 where he went to deliver only one man of Gadarene. Mm. Only one man of Gadarene was delivered by Jesus mm. in, 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 on that occasion. And through that, and through that particular man, the Bible says that uh, through him, his testimony spread over the Capolis. Mm. Somebody said the Capolis means 10 cities. Only one man's testimonies who was delivered by Jesus. Ten cities we are shaking to his foundation. I think I think in Acts 9 too, or either Acts 9, 10, or Acts 9 and Acts 10, there was a place where Peter got to. And somebody who had been who had been on his sick bed, I think for, for some years, for, for almost 10 years, mm. Peter got to that person and said, Look, uh, Aeneas, carry your bed. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Mm. The Bible says. This man carried his bed and he was healed. The Bible says, cities around believe the Lord oh, yes. because one person was mm. delivered. Mm. I see God using you Amen. to deliver one person at a time. Amen. And, as, and, and as God enlarges your course, I see God using you delivering nations Amen. by the help of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Imagine if all of us are functioning in our office mm. as a deliverer or as a person that God can enlarge mm. course goes true, it will become easier. Mm. Because we cannot all be at, be at the same place at the same time. Mm. Somebody is in, somebody's in the US is working as a deliverance mm. uh, agent. Somebody is in Poland. Somebody is in Norway. Somebody is in Nigeria. Somebody, anywhere they found themselves, they are just working as deliverance agents. Mm. Because they are because they believe in Christ. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, that's the word for you. You are also a deliverance agent. Mm. You are also an agent of, of enlightenment because you live in Christ. Mm. Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Oh, yes. That's the word for you. So get ready. Mm. Stop looking down upon yourself. Mm. Who am I? I am not big enough. You are a, you are a child of God. If you are a child of it. God, uh -huh. and Who your am name... I? I'm a child of God. <laughs> Who am I? I'm a child of God. Your name is in the book of life, you know. Mm. Excuse me. Eh? You, you are, are seated together with Christ, Christ. in heavenly places, mm, mm. far above all principalities oh, yeah. and powers and oh, everything yeah. that is named. Oh yeah, that's it for you. Above dominions mm -hmm. and might and mm -hmm. powers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. So begin to walk, you know, in that understanding of who you are. Mm. And begin to help people. Pray for them. Mm. Encourage them. Mm. Love them. Mm. Walk with them. Mm. And you will see lives being preserved. Mm. Esther made a judgment mm. and genocide was prevented. Mm. Mass murder was prevented. Oh, yes. Mass deliverance took place. Oh, yes. So, when you also step out as a deliverance agent, mm. you will see people's lives being preserved yes. through your ministries, through yes. your assignments. Yes. In your, and it shouldn't be, the deliverance should not be just in the four walls of a church. Mm. As in the are, world. In the world, yeah. Go into all the world. Mm. In the world, you are there. the light of the world. Yeah. You are the light of the world. So, Esther, mm. Esther obeyed the Lord. He mm. made judgment mm. by, by speaking to the king mm. and by taking up hammer in his evil plots and by praying, I mean, asking God for what to do, God giving her strategies. And when she finished praying, she stepped out she took steps and deliverance took place. And here we are. Hence the result. Today we are still talking about her. Ah, 
you know, the story is a historic story. Yeah. Very, very historic one. Mm. We, are, we are learning from, yes. from her yes. today. You know, every day we are making her history. Mm. Every day. Whether it's negative or, or positive. Negative. Uh, hey, you are writing a history about your life. Mm. I am writing a history about my life every day. So, even when we are passed away, that's the hard truth. If Jesus dies, one day, you and I will pass away. May we live long in Jesus' name. Amen. However, whether you live long or not, one day, you and I will pass away. But the joy is that if you have spent your life the way you should be spent here, mm. you have made the right judgment here, mm. coming generations will read about you and I. Mm. So, when she was in the world, mm. this and this and this she did. She stepped out and she prevented mass murder. Yes. She stepped out and she set the captives free. Yes. That will, you know, that is what will be written about us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Mm. Amen. And when we said the light of, that we are the light of the world, let's get it straight that when he says we are the light of the world, that means we are the light concerning people. People, mm. you know, in John, he talk, in First John, talks about love not the world okay so if we look at that in line with god so loved the world mm. you see that there are two contrasting worlds mm. that we are talking about when god said love not the world he was talking about the things in the world the lust of the flesh mm -hmm, the pride mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. the the, mm. the what's he called the three yeah lust of the flesh lust of the eyes the pride of and life, the pride of life. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what he was talking about there but here he's talking about people Mm. Be the light of people. Mm, mm. That's the world. So God so loved the world. That means the people in the world. It's not the world systems mm -hmm, that he was mm -hmm, talking mm -hmm. about. The pride of life. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. So he was talking about the world. Talking about the people that make up the world. Mm. Not the systems of the world. Yeah, that's true. So we are called to deliver. Mm. Especially when <laughs> we see people that are in bondage. And you know that within you that is hurting you. It's like you are the one that is going through that thing. Mm, you mm. know from that that God is calling you to do something. Do something. Take step concerning it. Yes, especially when it comes to even women. Let me just say about women. Okay. <laughs> okay. God has raised up people to deliver women. Mm. It's as if that thing has been going on for a very long time. Mm. That women are being oppressed. Are mm. subdued mm. and we are women that oh your own your own holy ghost is different from the holy ghost that <laughs> the men have which is not right ah. that is only the man that can give revelations mm. that you just sit down and be listening to the revelations and just run with that mm. Mm. that your own holy ghost is different from the man's holy ghost mm. that what can you do you can't teach all this and don't teach uh you you can't teach mm. uh, when you teach there are problems mm. so what about when men teach are there no problems oh definitely yeah why is it always towards women that women are the one that have the problem I and see. men don't have any problem <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> i think you know the enemy hates women with passion and the point is that you know uh, you know <laughs> i don't ask i said you know what is that uh, every time they have a women's program in churches mm. and they hardly have men's program mm. What is wrong with uh, what is women wrong with? are the ones that have problems. Uh, uh, men don't have so, any problems. So, you know, men, men don't perfect. have issues. Men they don't have perfect. issues. Only women have issues. Mm. That is the error. Yes. It is time for the church to arise. And it's uh, and it's time for even women to, to arise. 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 Mm. Mm. We need to arise. Mm. And occupy their place yes. in, in God, in yes. Christ. Yes. Occupy your place in Christ and in God. Because if God has saved your husband, the same mm. God has saved you. Yes. If God gave your husband the Holy Spirit, he has also given you also the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Not different. Not different one. Not female one. Not, not, not male one. I'm not saying that we should be... Uh, uh, I'm not saying that you know, we should, uh, I mean, the women should not begin to maybe rule over men. Mm. At the same time, they shouldn't become a stepping stone for the men. Um, and go and become door. lazy. Dormant. Dorm and become lazy. Say, well, daddy is praying for us. Uh, um, my husband is doing the prayers. What of you? Mm. You know, there's no way. You know, God has it, you know, God has planned for but there's no way you will, you know, there's no way you will learn 
what you will learn from your from your husband, you know, completely, without going to see God. I mean, see God yourself. The wife should see God herself. Thank God for the man. You know, he should teach the wife. But that should not replace personal study of yes, the wife. Yes, let me go for myself and uh, uh, go and learn because I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so. you should be able to go and learn yourself. Yes. As a woman. Mm. And begin to work with what you have learned and the men too. They should create an environment for their wives mm. to learn. Yes. Men, you are hearing me. Create... <laughs> Men, create an environment for your wife to learn. If the woman is the only person every time working from morning till evening, um, you know, uh, I mean, you come back from work as a man, you sit down and begin to flip channels, and the woman is in the kitchen, you know, she too, she went to work. She went to work uh, throughout the whole day. She she has been so tired, yes, she will still make food for you. And that, and that she does every day of the year. Mm -hmm. Every day of the year, she does that every day of the year. Mm -hmm. You don't create a plan, put a plan in place to support this woman. Mm -hmm. How will she have enough rest, enough rest mm -hmm. to sit down and study God's word herself? Mm -hmm. How will she have enough time to spend time and pray? So women should be encouraged. Create if I mean if you have the resources, mm -hmm. hire someone who can even cook food. Someone said, <laughs> someone said, someone said, you know, he hired he hired a, a, a cook for his wife. If it takes hiring a cook for your wife. Although you know you may miss you may miss the you may miss the uh, the sweetness of the food, but just enjoy it. But the point is that if it takes you hiring a cook for your wife so that she can she can have time to study, she can have time to pray, she can have time to seek God. Do so. So men, let's arise. If your wife is not manifesting grace, if your wife is lazy in scriptures, then the man should accept. Responsibility. responsibility. However, some women too, even if their if their husband says they should go and study, study the Bible and, and they create all the environment for them, they will say, "Look, uh, I know that uh, I'm a believer, but uh, you are my husband, you know." No. no. God has called you. He hasn't uh, called me. God has called you. He hasn't called me. God has called each of us to study at His feet, mm. to spend time with the Holy Spirit, to fulfill purpose. Oh yeah. Everybody is supposed to fulfill purpose, whether you are married or you are single. Uh -huh. We all have a purpose. God put us on this earth for a purpose, mm. and we are supposed to give birth to our destiny, mm. Mm. to our purpose. Oh yes. We are supposed to fulfill it. That's true. Not just come into the world and give birth, and I am um, Rachel Bigap, so and so. And then so and so begat this and that, mm. and this one to begat this, mm. and that one begat that, and that's it. Is that all? Mm. 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 That no, we need to give birth to our destiny. Mm. 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 Who is a failure as a man? Who is a failure? Holy Ghost said to me now that the man whose wife doesn't fulfill destiny mm. is a failure. Mm. Mm. If your wife didn't discover destiny, and she didn't also fulfill her destiny. Mm. You are a failure. In mm. fact, in fact, you are you are worse than an infidel. Mm. One of the things you, you know you have to provide for your for your wife is the environment to discover who she is, mm. to love God, to discover who who God is, and by discovering who God is, she will discover who she is. So, mm. as a man, if you have succeeded in putting an environment in place where your wife can discover God, know God, and also know herself, and give and give back to destiny, mm -hmm. then you are a success. Mm -hmm. But a failure is a person who will give everything to his wife, except allowing her to discover purpose, mm -hmm. except allowing her to knowing God, mm -hmm. except allowing her to give back to destiny. Mm -hmm. That is a failure. May you not be a failure as a man in Jesus' name. Amen. Men, arise. Mm -hmm. And women too. Don't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Women too, don't go to sleep. <laughs> mm, we need to arise. We need to arise. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, concerning Esther's judgment, mm. physical genocide was prevented. Mm. In our own time today, to prevent spiritual genocide from taking place, there must be judgment too. Yes. How, you know, how do we explain that? Mm. Many people, so many people, they are in churches today, 
and they don't know what they are called to do. <laughs> Some leaders have purposely hindered people from hearing God concerning their assignments. Mm. They will come and present to these people their own vision, mm. their own assignments. And they, will, and they will ask those people that they are teaching to pocket their own vision. How do you know that? When they bring a vision, say, well, God told me that, you know, uh, we should go and preach in 10 countries the gospel. That's, that's the leader talking now. And the person they are talking to, or maybe the, the member is saying, ah, excuse me, sir, uh, for now, I'm not called to, 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 I'm to 10 nations. I'm called to just serve in this city here, in this street here. The leader now says, you are called to serve in a, in a city. God is saying we should go to 10 nations. If God has told me, he must, he must tell you too. You must respond to my own, uh, to my own vision. So you have to do what I, what I say. Meanwhile, that person is called to just a city. And he or she is not even allowed to carry out his, his vision in that small city that he or she is staying. Mm -hmm. That is destiny being killed. That is genocide being put in place. When people are killed, when people are not allowed mm -hmm. to know their destiny and to, to work in it mm -hmm. by putting policies in place, by bringing, by bringing wrong teaching, by bringing, by bringing things that are not scriptural, so that they can now fulfill their own agenda at the expense of the agenda of God for the flock of God. That is genocide. That is being destroyed. You know, that, that is people being killed. So even today too, all these all these things that are going on, especially in the body of Christ on social media, people should not stop. Why? Because if we don't talk, we will say again, if we don't talk, many destinies will be wasted. Many lives will be wasted. May your life not be wasted in Jesus' name. Amen. Leaders are watching me. If you are watching me, let people make up their mind under you. Encourage them to discover their purpose and to walk by it. Even if what they are doing, you don't understand now, but God owns them. God is the owner of these people. Mm. Let God who owns them take care of them. As long as they are working in God's purpose for their lives, they will get to the end of their lives joyfully. And that will also encourage you to as a believer. Say, thank God as a leader, um, my members or the person I'm leading, or those I'm leading, they are achieving things, they are, they are hearing God, they are working in His purpose, and I'm sure that they will end well. So that should be our agenda, as, even as leaders of God in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Let's go to the next point. Okay. Talking about advantages of judging. Mm. When we judge, where, when we judge, for instance, when we judge teachings, mm. then we can stop unruly vain talking, deceit, mm. stop those that have subverting, subverting whole houses. That means undermining their power and the authority in Christ oh, yes. of believers. Mm. Stop wrong teachings mm. that have a motive, hidden agenda. And these people, they are teaching these things for financial gain mm. so, that they, so that we can have sound doctrine. Mm. So right when we are able to judge teaching, we can stop unruly, vain talking, deceit. Mm. Stop those that are subverting whole houses. Mm. Stop those that are bringing in things that they should not bring in. Traditions of men, mm. wisdom of men, mm. philosophy of men that mm. have been brought in. So that those things can stop. So if we don't judge these things, these teachings... For instance, if we don't stop them, this is what will be happening. Mm. People will be less than who they are called to be. Oh, yes. Mm. People will become mad. People will be bound, put in bondage rather be, than being liberated. Oh, yes. Let's look at Titus. Yeah, Titus, yeah. Yeah, Titus. Okay. Yeah. Titus. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. 
Is this 10 to 14? 10 to 14. Okay. Can I read? Yes, please. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, must be stopped. who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lookers' sake. Mm. One of them, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, mm. evil beasts, slow bellies. <laughs> this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Mm. 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 So this is a letter that Paul gave to Titus. Oh, yeah. Before this time, the Christians, no judgment was made on them. They were just allowed to go and just be teaching hmm. what they should not teach. Jewish fables. Because he was talking that, he was saying here that especially those of the circumcision, that their mouth must be stopped. Why should their mouth be stopped? Because this is what they were doing when there was no judgment. They were subverting whole houses. Hmm. And we have looked at that. That means undermining even the finished work of Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Undermining grace. Hmm. Hmm. Undermining what God has done for hmm. us. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we we'll want to give some examples or even undermining. Hmm. 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 Undermining the authority in Christ. Someone is saying that, well, you know, I am the high priest of our time. That is, that is putting other people under. Mm. In, under the New Testament, we don't have high priests now. Mm. We are all kings and priests. Oh, yes. Someone saying, well, you know, I have more anointing than you. My anointing is superior than your own anointing. Yes. That is undermining God's people. Mm. Subverting them. Mm. Someone said, God doesn't have grandchildren. Mm. Someone saying, well, you know, I, you know, I am the one mediating between, between you and God. So you better please me. In order please to me. Please God. So that, so that I can please, so I can please God. Mm. That is subverting the mm. house, I mean, the people of God, mm. putting them under. Mm. <laughs> you know, we have had this in a few occasions. Ah, uh, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit is for some special class of people. Mm. Is for, I mean, there's something you need to do so before you can have the Holy Ghost power. You know, I mean, it's for some people that are special. Mm, those that are high, uh, up uh, there. high up there. The Holy Ghost baptism is for some people who are high, 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 you know. And uh, that is also subverting God's people. Mm. Because if you look at, I think, Luke 11, you will see that the requirement for the power of the Holy Spirit is to just be a child of God. Finish. If you are a child of God, finish, ask for the Holy Spirit, and God we give you the Holy Ghost with no string attached. Mm. Teachings that subvert, subvert people. Mm. We have had a case where someone was telling me that, uh, um, Reverend Sam, uh, please uh, pray for us because uh, you know God, God will hear you better mm. than we hear me. you know more than me. God will hear you. you know God, will, you know God will hear people like you better than uh, that than that He will hear me. Excuse me, I am not God. Nobody is God Almighty. If you are a child of God, you have access to God by the same Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Mm. You, I mean, once you start praying the Holy Ghost, your prayer goes straight to God. Mm. Oof. Express. Mm. <laughs> Express me to God. Mm. So whether you are a pastor or a prophet, if you are a child of God, and you have the same Holy Ghost, you have the same anointing. There is no bigger anointing or smaller anointing. Mm. So, these people, they are subverting, making people look down upon themselves. Some Christians, until... Their pastor prays for them. They don't even believe in their own prayers. Mm. Terrible. Some people, until a prophet comes to town and pray for them, they don't believe in their prayers. I'm not saying that it's wrong to be prayed for. Mm. I'm not saying that it, I mean the office of the, of the prophet is not is not real. It's real by God's grace. We are prophets by God's grace. The point is that all these fivefold ministries should not replace your sonship. What will happen if pastor, if the pastor travels mm. and you are to pray and pray through <laughs> and you are waiting? Meanwhile, yeah. pastor is not around. What will happen if prophet is on leave? Mm. Some prophets, <laughs> mm. 
because they're so busy, they are looking for a place to go and rest. And if they leave town and they put up their phone, you can't contact them. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about some prophets. Sometimes, even personally, by God's grace, I, I help people. But sometimes I need to rest. So if you are calling the prophet and the, and the prophet is not around, mm. what will you do? I mean, you should learn to trust God yourself at a point like that. Or you find yourself in a place where there is no apostle, there is no teacher, there is no there is none in the fivefold ministry there. What you do? What, what, you, what will you do? You start something. Start in the Bible. Start praying. Start seeking God. Mm. Because you carry God. In the early thought, Acts 8, um, what, 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 what was his name? Um, uh, Philip, through persecution in Jerusalem, he found himself in Samaria. And Philip was just an ordinary deacon, somebody who was serving tables. When he got to Samaria, because he was loaded, because he's been taught that anywhere you find yourself, you are you are you are a child of God. The yes. God of Peter yes. was the God of was was the God of Philip. Mm. The God of James was the God of Philip. So when he got to Samaria, he declared an open here revival. Mm. As it and miracles began to happen. Mm. Ordinary deacon, deacon Philip. Brush the Bible, the Bible to, his, to a whole city. He mm. brought the Bible to a whole city. Mm. So that should be our mindset. So these people, I was well said, these people, they were subverting, subverting mm. houses, putting people and making them to look less than who they should be. Mm. You are a child of God. If you're a child of God, then God can walk through you. Oh, yes. If you're a child of God, God can use you. Mm. If you are a child of God, you God can speak God through you. The inside. Yeah, you, car you are a carrier of God. Yes, a by mobile spirit. carrier. You are a mobile carrier of God. Yes. So, some, 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 they will even tell you uh, that until you reach this particular location, mm. God cannot really answer you very well. Mm. Until you reach this particular house, this particular building that you have built here. Ah, this, uh, this is God's house, so this is God's house until you reach here. Meanwhile, Bible says you are the temple of the Almighty God. Oh yes. So you are a mobile house of God. Oh yes. God is in you. You are in Him. Mm. So when you need to call upon Him, He's not far away. Mm -hmm. He's in you. Oh yeah. At work, He's in you. Oh yes. So when when one needs help at your workplace, you can speak and things will happen. Mm. When somebody needs help in the marketplace, you can speak. And things will happen not mm -hmm. until they get to a location. Uh, we have to invite them to a particular location. Oh yes, uh, come, come, come to our location. Then God will heal you. God will save you. He can say. People say God is everywhere, mm. but when it comes to actually applying that um, saying, mm. they default. Say, well, you know, God is everywhere. However, let's confine him to a building. Mm. That's why you see people celebrating building than celebrating men. Mm. Buildings that will not last. Mm. Just a single, just a single earthquake, the building will just collapse. Mm. Even yes. Jesus Christ. Now <laughs> he said when they were admiring the temple. Oh yeah. He said not one stone will remain on the other. <laughs> on the other. And <laughs> Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh yeah. What he said then is still holds sway. Oh yes. Today. Oh yes. People celebrate buildings than than men. You know this building that, that has been built in all over the place. When you see members of those of those denominations, many of them, when you see them, you'll be wondering, huh? what are they being taught? Because when they talk, many of them they talk doubt. Many of them, when problem happens, you see them shaking as if uh, they are as if they are hopeless and they are helpless. You see them, you see, I mean, you see them afraid. Why? Because of what they've been taught. People celebrate buildings than human beings. Human beings. Human beings. Bible says. We are his buildings. Yes. In the book of Peter, it says, it says we are God's buildings. So you are watching me, you are God's buildings. All other buildings are secondary. Mm. They are places of worship. You can worship God under a tree. Mm. You can worship God on the internet. You can worship God on a, I mean, in a building built. But never you allow people to subvert you, to bring you to a level whereby they will cause, they will cause start worshiping a building. Mm. Ah, this must be the Lord's doing. Look at this building. Ah, this must be the Lord's doing. You know, look at this building. Now giving praise to building of men. Than seeing human beings, seeing human beings, you know, making exploits, being built up by God. Yeah, monumental you know, men, men and women. Oh yeah. Seeing 
the people in these denominations standing for Christ like Philip did in Samaria. Mm. People, Bible says that when there was persecution in the church, Bible says all the all the all the early church Christians they were scattered abroad. Bible says they went about preaching everywhere, mm. shaking shaking those nations. The early Roman Empire, they couldn't contain they couldn't contain the early church. They couldn't, and the early church they didn't have mighty buildings, mm. but they've been trained, they've been taught, they've been built up in Christ in the Holy Ghost in the Word. That, that was why they shook the then Roman Empire. Mm. And today, this Bible, this Bible is a result of the life they lived. Mm. Many people, they shed their blood for this Bible that we are carrying. Why? Because they were taught the right thing. Because they were built upon the foundation of the apostles. They were taught the right message. Mm. Buildings did not replace men. men. Um. And women, so subverting whole houses. Whole houses. That's what it means. So, so lack of judgment uh -huh. caused them to be subverting houses. Oh yes. Lack of judgment because they didn't make any judgment until Paul had to tell Titus. Mm. So they were subverting whole houses. Were being subverted. Were being the finished work of Christ was like nothing. Is tradition that took over. Mm. <laughs> they said that it was the Jewish fables and commandments of men that they were teaching from house to house. The Christians, they are also called, called the Greeks, the Greek. They were the ones going around, they said, especially those of the circumcision. And they were doing this for what? For material gain. Mm. Filthy locker. Riches. Mm. For money. And honey. I mean, those who are watching us in that Titus 1 10 to 14, Apostle Paul called them by their names. Yes, he didn't stop. I mean, I mean, he, didn't just, he didn't just call them, he called them by what they were doing. I mean, he wasn't insulting them, but he was calling them by what they were doing. He said, He said they were liars, they were evil beasts. Mm. These people, evil beasts, you know, we discussed that before we came for this broadcast. Mm. They, you know, they had no woman feeling at all. They were evil beasts. So he called them evil beasts. Can you imagine someone calling, calling, <laughs> calling a Christian? Uh, Look at you. You are, you are an evil beast. Uh, Say, well, you are insulting him. Oh. Ah, you should honor that. You, I mean, you honor Christians. So. Uh, but, this, but in this account, Titus 1, from 10 to 14, uh, he called them evil beasts. Why? Because they were exhibiting the traits of, of an evil beast. Which, which means there are good beasts. Yes. <laughs> There are some good beasts. Some beasts are good because uh, they will take the care of animals. their siblings. The animals, their like animals. Like dogs. Like yes. Dogs. There dogs. are some dogs. Yeah, some dogs, yeah. Some dogs will take care of their offsprings. Of, they are not heartless. Of the, even of their owner. Uh, they will take care of even uh, their uh, owner. Good, good beasts. Uh -huh. And some so beasts ones. are evil. You mm. said these people, their yeah. lifestyle, they are inhuman. They don't mm. care about what happens uh, to human beings. They don't have the love of God. They don't care for mankind. They are highly compassion, you know. They are highly compassionless. No mm. compassion at all. Mm. That uh, well, excuse me, sir. I am hungry. You are hungry. Uh, you must. You, I mean, you mustn't be hungry, yo. Go on. You must have something that you know that you can that you can bring from your house. Yes. Go and bring it. Meanwhile, these denominations, they are multi-million dollars denominations. They can take care of that person. Mm. They will see ask him to ask him or her to go and bring money. Mm. This, this person is hungry. You can see, you don't need a special glasses of revelations. <laughs> special, <laughs> special anointing to see to the spirit. This guy is hungry. This guy, the, the pair of shoes he's wearing, the, I mean, you know, it's like, um, it's like, uh, you know, they are, they are separate angles. Pair of shoes, separate angles like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see it with your, with your two, 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 yeah, with your pair of eyes. And you are asking the person to see, go and bring something. That you cannot say that you have something. This mm -hmm. evil beast, he called them by their names. Yes. And we, some people can say that Paul didn't do that. But let's look at it in verse 12. It's uh, Titus 1, for those that are just joining. Yeah. Titus 1 verse 10, uh, verse 12 says, One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars. Uh -huh. Evil beasts, beasts. slow bellies. bellies. 13. This witness is true. That is Paul there. 
this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply mm -hmm. that, they, that they may be sound in the faith. Oh, yes. Sharp, sharp rebuke. Sharp, <laughs> sharp rebuke. Mm, mm. So he was agreeing with one of their prophets, even that that's the... That's what he knew about the Christians, that even the Christian prophet has already said it, that these people, they are like this, that they are always liars. <laughs> so if they say A, make, you just know that they are saying B. Mm. And yet they are Christians. Oh, yeah. They were Christians. Mm. Not that they weren't Christians, mm. but they are taking the nature that they had mm. before. They are mm. taking it along and mixed it with the new creation. Mm, mm, mm. You know what? The Bible says that, you know, these people, they were slow bellies. Mm. Slow bellies means lazy person. Somebody who is lazy. Lazy person and, and a gluten. Mm. A gluten. Somebody who loves food. Mm. Lazy. Apostle Paul was not lazy. Apostle Paul said, with his own hands, he was working mm. to take care of himself, to take care of those people, to take care of those people that, are, that were working with him. Mm. He wasn't lazy at all. But he saw these people lazy Lazy and eating. They love food, but, mm. they, but they are lazy when it comes to mm. working. And they made judgment. And the beauty is that after, you know, the reason for making judgment was that so that they can have sound, sound faith. Yes. Yeah, sound in faith. That, yes. that, that, that's verse 13. Mm. So, that, so that these Christians can have, you know, they can be sound in faith. That's why he said, remove them sharply. So if he hadn't made judgment, what they had, what had been happening will continue to, to happen. happen. Oh yeah. So their mouths had to be stopped. That mm -hmm. was the judgment. Oh yes. That had to be made. Mm -hmm. They had to make that in order for these people to stop doing oh, yes. what they were doing. Oh yes. It's lack of judgment that caused the problem in the, in the first, first place. place. Oh yes. So mm -hmm. judgment had to now be made to stop people from teaching things that they ought not to teach. Not teach. Yeah. Tradition of men. And today we see that many a times we hear of teachings where there is a mixture of tradition, a mixture of um, Old Testament, and then maybe you bring one scripture from the New Testament, mm -hmm. you bring tradition, you bring um, the law of Moses, the old time, the Old Testament, something, and you put it together and say, yeah, it's the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it is not. It's wisdom yeah. of men. Oh, yes. Oh, it's yes. just a mixture of everything, and we can't really find any footing mm. in the New Testament. Mm. So those things have to be stopped. Oh, yes. And they even showed us the motive, why they were teaching those things, so that they can take money from people mm. for material gain. Mm. That's why they did mm. that. Mm. Oh, yes. And he didn't quote it. He didn't quote what they called them. Mm. He didn't say, oh, you see, you are behaving in a manner that is not all that good. good. He called them what they were. Mm. Mm. So that they could repent, change their minds. So the purpose, so was, purpose was to for correct them. them to repent. For them to change their mind. And so, that, you know, so that they can be judged here and, and avoid eternal judgment. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it was out of love. Mm. Mm. So, and the beauty is that today... There are there are free free platforms to to hear your views. Mm. Although I may not agree with the way so many so, so many people are doing it on social media today when it comes to correcting men of God or correcting doctrines, but the point is that somebody has to speak. Yeah. Somebody, somebody has to speak. So there's a platform for speaking. You know, if you cannot assess that person who is teaching the wrong doctrine, then the social media is free for you, you know, to talk. And if you can assess the person, give the person a, a phone call. And say, oh, pastor, pastor, Mrs. Prophet, you know this one is not good enough. You know, let us change this. And if if they will not, if if they, if they will not accept what you are saying, you have done your part. You've done your part. Mm. So Apostle Paul didn't leave. Uh, uh, but the in this particular case, he rebuked them sharply. Okay, 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 okay. So and he called them what they were, <laughs> because okay. in different parts of the Bible too, they called them what they were. Mm -hmm. So how come we today will say no? Today, what will we do if they are like this? Uh -huh. Will we say, okay, you are not Always. a slow belly. Mm -hmm. you, you, are, you are not going out for material gain. Mm. You are not an evil beast. Mm. If you are not a liar. Do that, call them, they call them, say, always, always liars. Even Jesus Christ to call people names. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. Then of yes. Thieves, which means that he was calling all those people that are dead thieves. thieves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm, mm. 
and in love, in love, uh, yes, in love. Uh, you know, from where we come from, yeah. they will say it's an abuse, that it's disrespectful, that how can you call somebody that, that this person is a child of God. But Jesus Christ didn't do that to other people in the day, other mm. disciples still didn't do that. We can see an example here now. Mm. Okay. Where we are coming from, they will say you don't call them that. But if they are trying to describe that person, mm, they, they will won't... use one word now. Instead of going around and <laughs> going around the whole ah. thing, uh, you know, this is not good uh, enough. He took the uh, thing. Uh, he took it uh, without permission. You are going around it instead of hitting the head, instead of the saying it's a nail on the head. <laughs> you don't want to call the person a thief. You say, oh, uh, you see, this thing is not a good thing to take these things. Uh, without know, permission, you know. Uh, you know. <laughs> With, uh, why go around like that and not use one word if we need to use one word if the word is available to redeem the time to, to, to redeem the time uh, going around and uh, starting around it oh, uh, oh okay okay dear yeah yeah okay that's okay okay that's all right we have learned something from the from apostle Paul concerning the Christian Christians he called a spade a spade yeah mm. that's the truth. And the joy is that he has something in mind. Mm. We want them, we want mm. them to change their ways, mm. and you know, to 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 engage in sound, you know, to have sound faith, mm. to to change their ways and to have sound faith. That mm. was the purpose why Apostle Paul, mm. you know, called them those names. Mm. Mm. Okay. And we can even see through the Bible. We see of people like that, even Jesus himself, mm, okay, giving names, name calling, and all. Ah. Mm. Uh, Okay. So the next one. Yeah, who's the last one? Yeah, for today. The last one for today. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That they are. We are still talking about the advantages of judging our way. If you notice, we you will see that we don't just talk about the advantages, but in some cases we also put in the disadvantages. Mm. If they hadn't done that judgment, that this is what would have happened. Mm. So the advantages of judging Peter. Mm. Peter himself, an elder of the church, was also judged by Paul in mm. Galatians 2, 11 to 14. Okay. Mm. Peter, mm. it was like the it was like the overseer of the early church. Yeah. The, mm, Galatians 2, mm. uh, 11 to 14. Yeah? Mm. Okay. So let me just read that from the Confessional Prayer Bible. Galatians 2. Okay. Uh-huh. But when Peter came to Antioch, I was stood, I was stood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them. Oh, we are of the circumcision, verse 13. And the other Jews joined likewise with him. So that Barnabas also was carried away with their hypocrisy. 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all, if you, being a Jew, live after the manner of Gentiles, mm -hmm. and not as do the Jews, why compare you the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? That was an awesome... Yes. So he had to make there. judgment. Because before Paul made judgment, this is what was happening. When there was no judgment, there was a division. A division between the Jews and the Gentiles. A division which Peter spearheaded. <laughs> Peter was the one that spearheaded it because he feared those that came from the Apostle James. Mm, from Jerusalem. That they will come and be, maybe that they will come and maybe they will start telling him that why is he eating with, uh, with Gentiles? the Gentiles. Mm. So before they came, he separated himself hmm. from them, from the Gentiles. But Paul, when he saw this, he rebuked him sharply hmm. in front of everybody. Hmm. He didn't take him privately somewhere that, please. You need to stop this, that this is not right. He did it before everybody. Because this thing involved everybody. Mm. Mm. It was affecting everybody. Because this was a division. 
that was spreading like wildfire oh yeah among the early church mm. so paul had to judge peter because everybody has started separating themselves mm. from the gentiles mm. and he said that if you look at verse 13 mm. is it 13 now no 14 but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the man of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why commandest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Hmm. So he had to judge hmm. and do it openly, so that everybody will learn and stop it immediately. Hmm. You can imagine if he had not made that judgment, mm -hmm. it would have spread because it's already spread around there in that vicinity. <laughs> it would have gone further than where it stopped, mm. uh, than where it started. Mm. It would have gone further to all the nations of the world mm. Mm. to separate the Jews and the Gentiles that were believers, mm. to mm. cause division. Oh, yes. So this thing had to be stopped, had to be stopped. Mm. because it wasn't according to the truth of the gospel what oh, does yes. the truth of the gospel say part of what the truth of the gospel says let's, let's say Galatians 3 28 mm -hmm. mm. Galatians 3 28 the truth of the gospel let me read from here there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Mm. That was the truth. That's the, the truth gospel. of the gospel. So we could all be together. So there was no male, no female. That we are all one in Christ. Mm. Uh, I belong to this race. I belong to that race. To so this denomination. Uh -huh. To that denomination. We are mm. talking about the body of Christ here. We are not talking about one single denomination mm. or one denomination there or there or anywhere. We are talking about the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the believers in Christ mm. are the body of Christ. And it spans the whole world. Oh, yes. Not only a few mm. places. We can also look at Colossians. Yeah, yeah. Colossians 3. Yeah, I mean, say, say something similar to what yeah. was said to the Galatians there. Mm. Colossians 3, yeah, verses um, 10, to 10, to 10 to 11. 10 to 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Judgment, judgment, judgment. Colossians 3, 10 to 11. And have put on the new man that is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in, in all. all so every believer has christ in him mm. you see that end part every believer has christ in him mm. Mm. and mm. nobody is supposed to look down upon anyone or upon anyone that oh you are a woman mm. so you don't have christ in you mm. or you're a man mm. you have christ mm. but the women don't have christ mm. or you belong to this race, so you have you are Christ. White. Or you, you have or, Christ. Uh -huh. You are black. You don't have Christ. You are black. You have more Christ than the white has Christ. <laughs> <More> Christ. <laughs> you are white. You have more Christ than the blacks. Or you are black. You have more Christ than the whites. Mm. That is not the scriptures. Mm. If you have the Holy Spirit, whether it doesn't matter the color, whether you are black or white, uh, tall or short, <laughs> or you know, you know, there's no green or black. Yeah. You know, <laughs> whoever you are, mm. Christ. In all mm. and for all. Yes. That is wonderful. That mm. is awesome. Um, that Jesus Christ, he didn't come to die for all skin. <laughs> he didn't come to die for skin. Uh, that, he that's interesting. For sin. He came sin. to die for sin, not for skin. Somebody. Not for skin. <laughs> ah, mm. he, didn't, I mean, he didn't come to die for race. Mm. He didn't come to die for, for accent. Mm. He came to die for souls of men. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just add this more. You know, in that account of Galatians 2, mm. Bible says, Barnabas also was, was carried, was carried away. away. Barnabas, despite his encounter, his experience with Paul, mm. what God has done through 
him and Paul to the Gentiles. Mm. When he saw that Peter was walking in an error, he was almost carried away. That's the danger. It was carried away. <laughs> he was, he was, car he was, <laughs> he was carried away. He, he, you know, he's two started walking mm. in division. Mm. So that is the danger of you know judgment. You know. Uh, not being made. Thank God, Apostle Paul made the judgment at the right time, mm. and that stopped. Today we are today we are all, we are looking at, you know, Paul's example. You mm. know, today we can read about what he mm. did. So we have to make judgment. Yes. Even if somebody is giving a teacher, if he's bringing the teaching. vision in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. if somebody is teaching, mm -hmm. and is bringing the vision in the body of Christ, okay, yes. that's profound. Mm. Then mm. we need to be aware. We have to make judgment. Mm. That, okay, this person is bringing division. Mm. Because there is right division and there is wrong division. Okay. When Jesus Christ came, we are told that he said he has come to bring what? Division. division. Mm -hmm. So there is a positive division, division. Oh, yeah. and there is a negative division. Absolutely, yeah. So if someone is bringing something that is only hmm. for some people, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that means that we can mark them that they are causing division mm. in the body of Christ. Christ. Mm. Mm. If what the person is uh, preaching is only is only for uh, uh, for a father, for, 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 for it, yeah, to only some people, a denomination or some people, mm. or or some race or some colors, mm. then that person is bringing division mm. Mm. to the body of Christ. Mm. Wow. Okay, we thank God for this insight mm. that we have had today. Mm. Um, uh, we have said that God has raised you up to be a deliverer. Oh, yes. Esther was raised up and Esther mm. did her part. Mm. You are being raised up. May the Lord help us to grow our part in Jesus' name. Amen. On Don't, the earth. On the earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true, on the earth. Because in heaven, no, there's nothing we are going you to do in heaven. To do any than be praising God. You, yeah. know, you, you know, you cannot set anybody free in heaven. Mm. Uh, the devil is not in heaven. He mm. has fallen down some, uh, so many years mm. ago. And we reside in heaven. And 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 we are New we, topic. yes, okay. <laughs> and, and we reside in heaven in Christ. Yes. Uh -huh. So so Esther Esther played her role, and we also we also said that uh, it's very good, you know. We make judgment call a spade a spade, mm. so that people can be turned to sound uh, <laughs> to sound faith. Thank you very much, my wife, for bringing me to for bringing me on course. Because <laughs> you know, <laughs> calling a spade a spade, mm. be blunt. Be humble, but be blunt. Mm. You don't, we should not sweep lying, slow, slow belliness, if that's what is allowed, mm. under the carpet. Mm. No, we shouldn't allow the gluten to go. We shouldn't allow filthy locker to continue in the body of Christ. We should mm. talk it out. We should mm. say it out. Mm. Mm. We shouldn't we shouldn't allow those who say they are elders mm. to begin to walk in hypocrisy and let it go. Mm. Peter was an example. Mm. He was an elder of the early church. Mm. When he walked in hypocrisy, Apostle Paul blamed him openly. Mm. And we have said before, Peter was a wonderful leader. Mm. He knew that he was he was at fault. He didn't query. He didn't query Peter. I am Paul. I mean, Paul, he didn't query Paul. He, he didn't remind Paul mm. uh, where he was coming from. Mm. That who are you? Mm. You know, when were you born again? Mm. Where we are you when we are sitting at at at, at Jesus' table mm. and we are eating with him? Where we are you? We are on the mountain together with Jesus. Where mm. we are you? Mm. Peter was humble enough to accept his fault. Yes, and we didn't we didn't like that he repeated that fault mm. again. He mm. kept on with the Lord. Mm. So we should learn from from Peter too. Mm. And the beauty is that we are reading about them today. Mm. They have lived an example for us to follow. Yes. May our lives. Be like that. We are our lives. We live a good example to follow mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks Amen. for coming today. And uh, the Lord is our strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm. Before we go, we were saying that we reside in heaven. Okay. I'm sure many of us, maybe we we just know it's head, head is it head knowledge now mm, mm. that we reside in heaven. Mm. That we don't reside, we are two dimension, uh, or how would we put it? Mm. By location, yeah, yeah, we reside in heaven and we reside on the earth. Oh, yes, when the Bible tells us that we have been taken to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, it, don't, it didn't say that after He put us there, that He brought us back down, mm. yeah, and yeah. it's our spirit that is in heaven. Mm. Mm. And even the Bible tells us that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
except a man be born of water and of, of the spirit, he cannot enter. So mm. that means that we have entered. When mm. the Bible says that the kingdom of God is in us, mm. Mm. that means that we are already in heaven. We are supposed to bring heaven to the earth. Mm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be, be done, done on, on earth, earth as, as, is as it is heaven. done in heaven. Mm. So that's why we were saying that we're already in heaven. Mm, mm. So we are supposed to bring heaven to the earth. Mm, mm. Many of us are purpose. All of us, even we have the purpose yeah. of we are so in our own, in our own, how would I put it? In our own our own field, mm. we are supposed to bring heaven to earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for the lovely explanation. God bless my sweetheart. <laughs> You have blessed already. Okay, let us uh, let's pray briefly for those who have watched, those who will be watching later. Let us pray briefly for for all of us. Thank you, Lord, for this broadcast today. We give you praise, Lord. We receive wisdom to judge our life at all times in Jesus' name. Amen. If Jesus could judge our lives all the time, mm. we can do the same. Oh yes. Your word says. That he that believes in me, John 14, verse 12, mm. the works that I do shall he do also. Greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. But we receive help, O Lord, at all times, in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And everything that we are walking in, is there, are there any qualities like the Christian Christians? Mm. Are there any qualities like the way Peter behaved? Lord, we receive help to come out of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We speak to every health condition. In the name of we Jesus. We command sickness to disappear Jesus. now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every sickness under Jesus. the sound of our voice, we speak to you. Depart now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The person with that hurting knee. Let the knee be healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. That person is like you have a pigeon, a pigeon feet, pigeon feet, pigeon feet. God is correcting that particular feet now. Amen. Receive the correction now by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely weekend ahead. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for joining us. Yeah, so it is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, we wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye. Bye.